Hey everybody, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring, and we are one week away from the March SAT. So let's talk about study plans. Let's talk about predictions for the test. I'm gonna give you a math strategy and we're gonna go over one very hard reading question. So I know with a week to go, your time is precious. So let's just get right into it. Study plan for the next week. In the Blue Book app, I highly recommend that this weekend you take a practice test and review it. If you've used up all the practice tests, I don't really know what to tell you. You could take one of the practice PSATs in that app. You could go on to Khan Academy and do practice questions there. You can use um, sometimes some of the easier modules maybe you didn't get to the last time. You can kind of purposely take the test in a way that puts you in those extra modules. There's lots of things you can do, but you can also maybe just bother the College Board. They were supposed to release more practice tests before the March SAT, and they haven't done that as of Friday when I'm recording this. So maybe bother them on social media and see if they will hopefully listen to you and release the two more tests if you need them. But for everyone else, if you haven't taken all the practice tests, this is a great opportunity to take one so you can get that last little dress rehearsal before the actual exam. So take it seriously, time yourself, and make sure that you try to duplicate the testing experience as much as possible. During the next week, it's time to review things, especially things that are just memorization-based, right? So things like grammar rules, math formulas, I have playlists for both of those things. They're in the description to this video. So those are really good things because at this point, if you haven't really instituted the new strategies, it's gonna be hard to do that because they are really about building new habits and you just don't have the time for that. But if you haven't seen my strategy series, then maybe that is a good place to start. But if you've been doing your prep this entire time, then most of this last week should be about memorization and just reviewing things that are easy to just lock in because we know we will see them on the test. March 8th, the night before the test, just relax and rest. You do not need to cram and study maybe review a video or some sort of concept that you struggled with, but for the most part, you should just be able to take it easy and go to bed early so that you're well rested for the next day. If you are watching this video though on March 8th, then I guess, yeah, you probably didn't really do a whole lot of work leading up to March 9th. So uh, in that case, I would just kind of turn this video off right now, go to my strategy series and just start cranking through the strategies that interest you because you really do need to know a couple new things about how this test works before you get into it on uh, Saturday morning. So uh, hopefully I'm not actually talking to anyone that you've all been studying and are fully prepared. But let's talk about predictions for this test, okay? So first of all, uh, first of all, a little bit of a disclaimer. This is just based on my gut feeling. I have no inside information. But one thing I do know from lots of experience is the content on the March SAT will be the same as the content that we've seen on all the practice tests and all the practice materials. They are not going to just throw some random topic at you. You've most likely, if you've been studying, seen all the topics that you're going to see on the March SAT before. So just make sure you go back and review things that you struggled with because they're likely to come up again. So the content on the SAT does not change from test to test. They might find new and interesting ways of asking about that content, but on the whole, the stuff stays the same. What I do think might change, and again, this is just based on my gut feeling, I think the pacing on the real exam might be harder than the pacing on the practice test, okay? Especially tests one through three in the Big Blue, uh, in, the, in the Blue Book app. So my, my reason for that is I'm a little worried about the pacing from the fourth test in the Blue Book app. It's a little bit harder. And I do think that on the hard modules, the second module, if you get into that hard module for each subject, you might have trouble pacing, even if you are really good at the test. It, I have trouble pacing. It's just a harder section. You have the same amount of time, you have the same amount of questions, but the overall difficulty is harder and there will be things that maybe throw you off. My, my main point here though is that that shouldn't worry you because if it is harder to pace, if you do need to skip a question or two, the curve should be easier to account for that. So this is one thing that's always difficult about the SAT is it feels like you're doing badly when you're not. So you can't really let one or two bad questions throw you off. If you end up skipping a question or two for the sake of getting to more questions that come later, that's okay, especially in like the reading module where we know the easier questions, the grammar, the transitions, the outlines, those are at the end. So make sure that you save time for those things. And if it means giving up on a passage question or two, that's okay. Same thing in math. It's okay to give up on a really weird hard math question if there's other stuff that's coming that you can use the calculator for and stuff like that. So don't be afraid to skip if it means sacrificing one question for the sake of everything else. You can still do very, very well. And I don't want that to throw you off. That is a perfectly natural way to take this test. 
So again, I, I have no inside information. I'd be happy to be wrong about this. So if you uh, are looking at this video after you've taken the test, feel free to comment and just let me know. Was I right? Did it seem harder? Did you have more trouble finishing? I am curious to know. This is the first time they're giving this digital SAT in the United States. So it is a little bit of a, a new experience for a lot of people. But let's talk about some things you can do if you are worried about pacing, especially in that hard module. In math, it's very easy. I've talked about this in many different places in many different videos. But if you see a question like this with an equation like that, that's kind of crazy looking. I do not care how good you are at algebra. Nobody is impressed by your algebra skills. You do not want to be doing algebra to solve this question. Now you could guess and check, right? We have answer choices that could be plugged in for X. That's okay. But really what you should be doing here is instantly reaching for that Desmos calculator. Okay. Just take that equation and just type it into Desmos and it's going to give you two vertical lines and you can look at where those lines are. Sometimes you can even click them to see what the values are. But in this case, we see we have a solution at X equals three and a solution at X equals negative three and a half. And so since only negative three and a half is an answer, that is our answer. This becomes a 10 second question. If you just remember that Desmos exists for every single question for you to just plug things in. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I've got a whole video on the strategies that you should use for Desmos for this SAT. It's going to make a lot of algebra obsolete or at least faster. And so you got to be able to reach for it. A lot of you are just so good at algebra in school that you, you just kind of start solving things without even thinking about it. If you are worried about pacing on the test, you cannot do that. You need to be using Desmos to speed you up and move through questions faster. But let's talk about reading because I think that's where most of us struggle. So here is a very difficult question. This is one of those logic inference questions. So let's talk about what we can do to help us out when the questions get really hard and confusing. So tip number one is we're going to need to use some scratch paper. So as I read this passage, we are going to kind of start to write some notes because this is definitely a passage where I would be writing on my page. There's too much information. It's too complicated to keep in my head this entire time. So we're going to write it down so we don't have it in our head and we can free our brain to do other things, to do other logic thinking for this question. So let's take a look. Retinol, a derivative of vitamin A, is a popular ingredient in many skincare products due to its potential positive effects on the skin. This is a helpful sentence. It's just a definition. It's not really telling me anything. There's nothing I would write down here. I could always go back to this if I were confused, but mostly this is just a sentence that's introducing me to the topic. Next sentence. Some studies have shown that regular application of products containing retinol can decrease the appearance of wrinkles. Okay, that seems useful, right? So retinol decreases wrinkles. This is exactly what I'd write on my page, these little letters and symbols to help me understand what's going on. I can tell right away just from that one sentence that this question is gonna have a lot of ups and downs. So I wanna keep track of them because it might matter for the question. Next sentence. This is also an effect of collagen, a compound that is naturally produced by the skin, but in greater concentrations in the presence of retinol. Okay, so let's break that down. We have uh, retinol increases the concentrations of collagen, and collagen is also something that decreases wrinkles. So we have this little bit of a cycle here of different things that are happening with retinol, with collagen, and wrinkles. So this is just a bunch of arrows to keep track of the cycle. Let's move on. In one long-term study, researchers gave participants an aloe vera skincare product that did not contain retinol and found that it also reduced the appearance of wrinkles. So, okay, aloe, which does not have retinol, also decreases wrinkles. This is a separate idea. This is kind of its own little world. And I can tell that I'm probably going to need to compare these two things. So now I know enough to be able to start thinking about these answer choices. So let's just go through uh, which choice most logically completes the text. So choice A, scientists do not yet know how collagen affects the appearance of wrinkles. So that bothers me for a few reasons. Number one, it doesn't seem like they're confused about anything. It doesn't seem like the point of the passage is that they don't know stuff. Uh, I mean, maybe they do, maybe they don't. It seems like they do know a lot of things, right? They, we wrote all these arrows down, so clearly there's some background knowledge here. So that phrasing bothers me. But also, is it really about collagen? Is, is, it, is this passage about what collagen does? It seems it's more about what retinol does, so maybe the main character of the passage is a little different than what we would want. So there's a couple reasons I don't like this choice. I would confidently cross this out. Choice B, collagen may be less effective than retinol for improving the health of a person's skin. Well, this choice has a very clear and very common trap. They're talking about a comparison. They're, they're not saying in this passage what is better or worse at reducing wrinkles. They're saying that retinol reduces wrinkles. They're saying that collagen reduces wrinkles. They're saying that aloe reduces wrinkles. At no point 
are they saying which one is better or worse than any other? And this is very common because it's a natural human tendency for us to start ranking things, right? That's just what we like to do. But just because these things all reduce wrinkles does not mean that the passage is about which one is better or worse. It does not say that. So anytime they start making comparisons in the answer choices, I get nervous because I need to think, does that comparison also exist in the passage or is it me making that comparison? So I don't even know. In real life, it may be true that one of these is better than another. I have no idea. If you're one of those people that watches all those TikTok skincare videos, then great. Feel free to comment about it and share your knowledge. But I don't care. No one cares. The SAT is not real life. It's just a passage. So we got to stick to what is in the passage. So C and D, I will admit, are very difficult and very similar choices. So let's just clear out the clutter for now and just focus on C and D. And for these choices, we are going to need to write down some things. So let's just take a look at choice C. Again, I put this on my scratch paper. Aloe vera skincare products may lessen wrinkles without boosting collagen production. Okay, so if I think about it, what they're saying is aloe also reduces wrinkles. We knew that, but it does it without boosting collagen production. So that's what I would write down. Okay, so... I get it, it seems a little repetitive from what's in the passage, but fine. Let's look at D. Aloe vera skincare products can increase collagen concentrations without using retinol. So okay, again, some things we knew. We knew aloe didn't have retinol, but now we're saying that it increases collagen. So both of these choices feel very similar to me. They both feel logical, right? We know that aloe reduces wrinkles. Maybe collagen has nothing to do with that. Uh, it, we also know that uh, it, because it, uh, collagen does reduce wrinkles, maybe aloe is somehow tapping into that same cycle that's on the left there and, and using collagen to make wrinkles go away. Both of those things are logical, but only one choice is correct. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, the answer is C. So let me explain why. This is very difficult, okay? So for choice C, we are not really adding anything to the passage. We are basically just repeating what is already there. So one part of that is obvious. Aloe reduces wrinkles. That was We wrote that down earlier directly from the passage. That is the same. Now, the part about there being no increase in collagen is it feels kind of new, but if we look at our previous notes, it really isn't. Because what did we learn about collagen? We learned that retinol increases collagen, okay? But if aloe has no retinol, then it's logical that there's no increase in collagen, okay? So think about that, right? If retinol increases collagen, we remove the retinol, we probably remove the extra collagen. So that is... That is not really doing anything, but then otherwise, other than taking that initial uh, R to C that I wrote all the way on the left there and just kind of flipping both parts, right? No R, no C. That's basically what we're doing. It's very simple. Whereas if we look at choice D, we are adding something here that, that could be true. Again, I don't know if in real life it actually is, but we need more evidence of that in order to pick it for a choice like this. So the, we know that aloe has no retinol, but to say that it increases collagen production, we don't know that. It could, but all we know is that retinol increases collagen. So to say that the collagen is going up when there's no retinol, that is information we never had. So this is adding something new. And that is really the key. And this is tip number two for this uh, reading section and especially for these logically complete questions. Uh, we have to be careful between two, when we have two choices that we pick the one that is just closer to what the passage says. Choice C is basically restating what is in the passage. But choice D is making a leap. It's going a little bit beyond that. And it's saying something that could be true, but requires a little bit of an extra assumption on our part. And we really don't want to do that if we can avoid it. And so sometimes on these inference questions, we will need to make those little bit of a leaps, those little jumps, okay? We will need to connect some dots for the SAT. They'll leave a path for us and we just need to follow it to the conclusion. But if we are between two choices, just the one that is closer to just what they said is probably the better choice. Just think of it like this. The bigger the leap, the bigger the risk. Choices that involve a lot of extra thought, a lot of assumptions, tend to be more wrong. And so sometimes we do need to make those extra assumptions. But if we've got this tension between two choices and we're really stuck, if you can figure out which one is more of just a restatement of what is there, that is more likely to be the better choice. 
So let's finish up here. I will try to make some more videos about these logic questions before March 9th. So make sure you subscribe because I'll release them whenever I can do them. So uh, those are among the hardest reading passages. I think that's the hardest question type on the reading section now. So those are ones that you definitely want to get better at uh, mastering and solving. They are very difficult and they are very time consuming. So I will help you with those as much as I can. So please subscribe for that. But uh, there will be plenty in the description already for you. So we have the, the first link is that strategy series that I definitely think you should watch if you haven't done that already. Maybe you go back and review some things if you've seen it just to get a, another reminder about the main strategies. I've got a playlist on how to take practice tests. The homepage of my YouTube channel has playlists for each of the blue book, blue book practice tests. So every single question that has been released has a video and you can figure out what you did wrong. And if they do come out with new tests, I will make more videos as soon as humanly possible. I've got playlists about the grammar rules, the math concepts. And look, if any of it helps, please hit that like button for me, subscribe, comment, give me your thoughts. It really helps me out and it tells me that, you know, if people are watching, uh, that I should make more stuff. So hopefully this helped you as well and got you in the right frame of mind for that March SAT. Once again, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring. And uh, remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less, Sattel for more. Thanks for watching and good luck on the test.